Our last plenary presentation this morning is a research team report titled Improving Hazard Recognition in Construction. Presenting is Jim Duncan, HSE Director for Jacobs Engineering. In his 25 years with the company, he has worked in various engineering, project management, operation management, and safety roles. Currently, he develops and sustains the HSE management system, providing support to projects globally and provides construction safety leadership and training support to a major client. Join me in welcoming Jim Duncan. So for the past two years, I've had the honor and, and privilege of working with RT293, uh, a, a fantastic team. I hope all of you uh, get an opportunity to meet them today or tomorrow. Um, we had a really tough question that we, that we were challenged with, and that tough question was, how can we improve hazard recognition in the construction industry? So, first thing I want to explore is why, you know, why is hazard recognition important? Most of us work for companies that um, operate uh, safety management processes similar to the, the ones shown here, whether it be planning or observation or audits. Um, most of these processes are based on uh, zero accident techniques. But all of these processes have one thing in common, and that one thing in common and that's critical to them is the ability of the workers and the management of the companies to recognize hazards. So hazard recognition is a fundamental skill that's required to make these processes and systems effective. As we'll show, workers are only able to recognize about 45% of the hazards that they encounter in the workplace. So, so I'll say that another way. Uh, workers are missing more than 50% of the hazards that they encounter in the workplace, and that's not acceptable. So we're gonna do a little test. This is not a clicker test, but we're gonna do a, a test. I, wanna, I want you to take about uh, 20 seconds and look at this photo and just in your head uh, count how many hazards you can spot. I think that's probably close enough to 20. So let's see how we did. A lot of you probably were able to spot these three. They're pretty obvious. What about these four? Or these next five? So there, there, if, if you count them, there's 13 hazards identified associated with this particular work activity. If you were able to identify six of them, you're better than average. So our essential question was, what practices, what breakthrough practices and, and processes are out there that we can bring to bear and help improve uh, hazard recognition in the construction industry. And so two years ago, when we started this process, we formed together as a team. I think there were probably 14 or 15 of us at the time. And uh, the first thing we did was look at uh, what it, what's currently out there. What's out there in, in not only the construction, construction industry, but in other industries as well. So we looked at uh, the automotive industry, we looked at manufacturing, we even looked at military and, and aerospace and those sort of things to try to find those real nuggets, those real um, opportunities to leverage that and bring it into the construction industry and improve hazard recognition. And so we identified uh, over a hundred different ideas or, or, or processes that were out there and through uh, uh, 
collaboration with the team, we narrowed those down to the three that we felt like were the most promising in terms of delivering positive results. And we broke up into subcommittees and we further developed those strategies into um, field testable strategies. We took those strategies to the field and over about a six month period uh, actually tested these strategies on uh, active construction and maintenance sites. And then finally, here we are two years later uh, to report out and share with you the results of our field testing as well as uh, give you some information on, on how to implement these uh, strategies. And we'll go over that in our implementation session, which will be immediately after this. Um, so I, I said there were three strategies, but there's really a fourth that's sort of the underlying uh, theme, if you will, that kind of ties these all together, and that's this concept of energy. So uh, the theory is that, that an energy source, uh, when a person is exposed to an un unwanted exposure to an en energy source, it can result in an injury. So look around you in this room, there's all kinds of energy sources, and you know, just for example, if I happen to stand close to the edge here, I'm exposing myself to a potential fall hazard due to, the, due to gravity as a potential energy source. So this, this concept is really an underlying element that, that, that goes across all three of the strategies. So what are the strategies? We, uh, we, d we uh, developed a training strategy that we're calling SAVES. Uh, we developed a planning strategy that we call SMQM, which is basically a meeting quality uh, measurement system. And then there's an execution or worksite strategy that we call the, the hazard ID board. And just real quickly on each one of these strategies, um, SAVES is a very interactive, uh, fun, uh, augmented virtual environment that, that a worker actually sits at a computer in a, in a risk-free environment and is able to train on hazard recognition by um, uh, navigating, as we call it, an avatar through, through this uh, augmented uh, environment, augmented virtual environment. And the chart at the bottom shows just notionally uh, before and after we implemented this, the, the uh, hazard recognition performance. So you can see there was almost a step change in, in improvement in hazard recognition, which is similar for the other two strategies as well. And we'll go over these uh, data in, in more detail during this, the implementation session. The next strategy, uh, well, this, this is just a, a little shot showing the avatar. It's built on a, an actual BIM model. Uh, the person navigates the avatar to different hazards. They encounter a hazard. A high-definition photograph comes up. And then they're, they're uh, given the opportunity to relate that hazard to a potential energy source and uh, also ri uh, rank it based on severity. The next hazard was a pl uh, the next <laughs> Uh, strategy was a planning strategy, uh, and it's really based on a tool or a process that we all probably use, and that's uh, a pre-job planning meeting. And so the focus of this particular strategy is on uh, the quality of the communication around hazards in the meeting, and it takes into account other factors such as meeting location, uh, involvement of the supervisor and, and other factors, which we'll, uh, we've got an exercise actually we'll do in the implementation session that shows you how to use this. Um, and then the, the last strategy was execution strategy. The hit board, it's a very visual, uh, hands-on tool that, that the, the, the crew takes to the work site and actually uh, interacts with, not only before the work starts, but they can interact with it uh, during, during the course of performing the task and also um, it's dynamic in terms of the fact that you can, um, as other hazards are uh, identified, you can add them to the board and, and share in that communication uh, with the crew. So 
in summary, we've researched, developed, and innovated, tested three strategies that all show a significant improvement in, in hazard recognition. And, and we, sh we validated that through these field tests that we conducted over about a six month period involving over 100 days in the field on active sites. Um, over 100 different uh, people were involved in, in terms of uh, crew participants uh, representing eight different craft disciplines and in six sites over five uh, different states. So it was a, a fairly involved testing program. So what we'd like for you to take away from this is that just uh, to reiterate that our workers are only identifying about 45% of the hazards out there and you have an opportunity through these strategies to take that 45% uh, and improve to up to 73% according to the data that we, that we have with more than a 99% confidence. So come to our implementation session. It's in uh, Mediterranean 1 and 2 uh, after the break and you'll learn more about the, the actual strategies as well as the, the data that, that, that backs them up and uh, get to see our avatar in action. Mayhem is everywhere. Are you in good hands?